So this is a tool assisted run I did of Shinobi 3 where I don't take any damage and I don't kill anything unless I need to to advance. Um, I also put down the rule that I can't use any shuriken. But I did this mainly for fun years ago. Uh, I had never tried doing anything with tool assists before on a game and I just thought it'd be fun to try and do it, so I did it. It uh, was a lot of work, but it was definitely pretty neat when it was done to watch the whole final product. So I'm sure that those of you that do tool assisted speed runs that actually know what you're doing could probably beat this game way, way faster than I did in this and probably already have. But uh, I'm just putting this up because I figured it'd be, you know, something you guys might want to see. There's a few, like, kind of uh, tricks I use in it that don't really increase my speed, but just kind of look weird like that. Like the running thing, where I just kind of freeze in place. And a lot of games you can do that on, like the single frame movements and stuff like that. Um, so I'm sure that those of you that are professional speedrunners are probably looking at this and are going like, what a noob. And I totally agree with you. This is, you know, yeah, I mean, this is pretty much like just for fun. So... Feel free to critique how bad I am at planning out routes and everything else on this. But anyways, um, yeah, so I figured I'd do commentary on this some. It's kind of weird commentating on something I did, like, I can't even remember how many years ago. But uh, if anything interesting happens, I'll probably stay silent for a large majority of this, but if anything really interesting happens or whatever else, then I'll say stuff about it. But otherwise, um, enjoy a newbie, super newbie uh, tool-assisted run of Shinobi 3. Oh, I did want to note that. You notice how I actually climbed up the wall there? That's because, um, as far as I know, I'm the person that figured this out. I don't know if it's actually, like, usable in any real speedruns. But when, uh, Joe does his jump kick, that's your character, when Joe does his kick when he's in the air and he kicks downwards, his sprite moves up, I think, like, one or two pixels. And then it immediately, if you hit the wall, you go back into your, uh, waiting animation in midair within I think maybe another frame or two and so you can literally use this you go back into the waiting animation but you don't fall so if you do a jump kick I think every two or so frames you can actually move up a wall and just like kind of glide up the wall and it's got a lot of uses later on too when you can uh, do the jump kicks against bosses and it does ridiculous amounts of damage super fast which I think might actually be good in a speed run because one of the later bosses I kill like almost instantaneously because of that but also, for those of you that haven't played Shinobi 3, this is a really, really good game. Uh, this is, in my opinion, one of the Sega Genesis classics. It's just, I mean, you know, it's just the music, the gameplay. It's like, you know, it's, it's a classic go around and kill everything that moves type game. But it's done in a way that you never really feel like it's monotonous, that you're killing just hordes of ninjas and, you know, warriors and all this crap. It, it really is done well. It really is kind of the uh, pinnacle of the Shinobi series, in my opinion. What's kind of interesting, too, is is uh, much like a few other games on the Genesis, probably a lot of other games, actually, there is a complete build of Shinobi 3, almost complete, that was given to game reviewers, game magazines, stuff like that. And it had an extra ninjutsu in it, it had a few different animations, gameplay elements, entirely different enemies levels. But for whatever reason, Sega said, you know, fuck it and just scrapped the whole thing. And just literally pretty much did it from scratch, you know. Uh, so that's, that's pretty nuts actually, that they just decided to remake the whole game, but I guess it paid off. I know they kept a few elements in, obviously, but they remade a lot of the game. And I don't know how much you can really speed run on this game, you know, to be honest, it's like... I mean, I don't know if there's any glitches that let you kind of move through the environment. I mean, all you can really do is just minimize the amount of time you spend um, not moving, I guess. That's one of the tricks, too, is, is when you land, you freeze for a split second. So you want to try and always land um, as little as possible. You want to jump as little as possible, and there's, the, there's a trick again going up the wall. Again, I'm sure that those of you that, you know, actually know what the hell you're doing in speedrunning might actually be able to make a use of that. But anyways, um, if you're wondering why I did it so that I don't kill anything, there is actually, I did want to note, there is actually one point in this game where I do have to use a shuriken, but that's because I couldn't figure out any other way to advance it. But basically, again, this is for fun. I wasn't really playing by, like, hard and fast rules here, you know. But anyways, um... 
the reason I have that rule on there is because one, a lot of the enemies in this game shoot bullets, and Joe, your character, has a gigantic hitbox in this game. For whatever reason, this game is like playing the opposite of a shoot 'em up game. Like, if anything gets even remotely near him in terms of like projectiles, it fucking hits him. So, and that's kind of a trick there going back and forth, because every time you go from left to right, his uh his sprite goes the complete opposite direction the exact next frame so you can make it look like there's like shadow clones there I guess. But anyways, um, it may not show up on YouTube actually due to its frame rate, I'm not sure. But anyways, yeah, I did that and so I thought it'd make it a lot more interesting if there were a whole bunch of bullets to dodge rather than killing everybody and then it's like, you know, there's nothing left to dodge. And so, yeah. And also the time you take to kill enemies in this game takes it, uh, it makes it a slower run too, so it's like, you know, even in that sense, I think even if you're speedrunning the game, there's not really much point in killing most of the enemies. So... I had to burp. So yeah, I, you know, this is, uh, this is pretty much just for fun, so... And then here I tried to, like, make it, you know, out at the very last second. And then going up the wall again. Now, this next boss is one area where I think it might be useful to do the wall jumping trick. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think it might be. So, like, well, you'll see what I mean here. I like, see that right there. You can essentially keep yourself up in the air and then immediately attack him as soon as he comes down. So it's like, I don't know if it's, if it's got some sort of use there, you know what I mean? I also think that his jump kick is pretty powerful, it seems to be, but I don't think it's as powerful as his uh, standing sword slice. 